We are what we are from, both here and before this that we have become. The essence of our nature and the origin are one. Through essence conceived, paradox begotten, identity formed and origin forgotten, dismembered from memory, remember, remember. I'm not sure how to tell this story, the origins of consciousness. I feel that it may be easier to begin by explaining that there is a pre-material infrastructure from which human consciousness manifests itself in our material world. We've adopted terms in our colloquial lexicon like matrix of consciousness, structure of thought, belief systems, frame of mind, thought forms, thought patterns and many other expressions to describe human consciousness structurally. In observing the structures of the world that humans have built, we will notice precise patterns that reflect the form of consciousness that built them. This infrastructure of human consciousness is in fact universal. It is shared throughout the world despite our varying nationalities, ethnicities, cultures, or our family circumstances. Not only does the infrastructure of consciousness shape our external world, but it also determines our place in it by how our personal identities have been formed within the context of the greater infrastructure itself. As the old saying goes, as within, as without. So what I am attempting to relay is that we form our identities in life from a pre-existing mold, a framework that has existed from the beginning of time and space. Out of this framework or infrastructure, we build our homes, our roads, our cities, our tools, our governments, and our relationships. This infrastructure is also responsible for all human suffering, the suffering we have inflicted on ourselves, each other, and our environment. Everybody knows that something's wrong. The reason why we have not been able to evolve ourselves out of this is that all options for change have been derived from within the infrastructure itself. You can't think your way out of a problem that was created by thought. In other words, the solutions that we have been provided on how to change our lives, how to think better, how to change unwanted behaviors, get out of cycles of abuse, change our societies for the better, end homelessness, hunger, war, sexual violence, and bring the peace we cry out for. All of these solutions, all of these options, have only helped to sustain the very way things are. This is because they originate out of human consciousness, out of an infrastructure that exists only to sustain its existence. I must let you know that I must use this infrastructure to describe the infrastructure, how it formed, how it works, and how to end it. This process of explaining is going to be long and at times complicated. I will do my best to simplify it where I can. However, I want you to know that what I'm attempting to describe is a living, functioning process whose movements, expressions, and manifestations are all interdependent. Yet, if we can understand the simplicity of its origins, then we can understand how everything became so confusing. There is a way to radically and forever change the way we experience life. To live without suffering, in love, in beauty, and in harmony with creation itself. When we understand how this infrastructure works within our own lives and within the human world as a whole, we will then be able to realize the answer we have searched for our whole lives and yet known from the beginning of time. An answer, in a word, more misunderstood than any other. Love. In the following, I will introduce three main characters. They are the primary elements of consciousness. This is where the story begins, with them. I need to explain their qualities before I introduce their relationship. So please understand that as I speak about and describe to you who they are, their essential nature will unfold through their interactions with each other from the beginning of space and time, shaping what we know today as consciousness itself. Also, it is important to remember that the words I use 
are only the best that I have discovered to describe them, and there are, no doubt, many more that can be attributed to them. Shaped from breath and tongue, spoken, shouted, cried, and sung, dressed for the occasion, words are strung in unison. Thread through by intention, they fabricate being and clothe expression in suitable fashion, though they cannot lay bare the nakedness of being that is unconditional love. Translating that which whose very essence sprung forth all perceivable elements, forces, and their various states of dynamism is unfathomable. The problem is not allotted to language alone, with its innate inadequacies, its inability to reflect the essence of experience, without the inevitable conflicts that arise when you are mediated and represented poorly by an incompetent ambassador. Let us acknowledge, once again, that words in closing meaning are only metaphors for being, the being of existence in timeless presence, present as a gift. There is, however, a pre-existing circumstance that hinders our ability to experience, communicate, and translate that which is unconditional with language. Thus, though the limitations of language are innately involved in our conflicts, they are neither causal nor ultimately important here at this time. I call my, I have called myself at times a noetic archaeologist. What I like to do is go and dig up, not pot shards and glass beads, but ideas, old, old ideas that have been under the dirt a long, long time. And this is what I essentially did here with the I Ching. And Gnosticism is another boneyard, and alchemy is another boneyard, and the Maya are another boneyard, and ancient Hawaii is another. And I love to go into these things and draw conclusions, you know. It's all very pregnant with intention toward the, the, the person who comes to it with an open mind. I mean, everything wants to speak, everything wants to guide us. But my approach to this kind of thing is basically Jungian. I mean, that's where I got my interest in all of this material. See, I think that what we're always seeing is psyche, that we're always seeing uh, a mirroring of the intentionality of ourselves to concretize consciousness, to put a name on it. 